You might have come across Instagram if you like ever open a book on refrigeration. But this is not what we do around here. Not with this horrifying looking diagram at least. So two things. Condensation and evaporation. That's all we need for refrigeration. Well not really but yeah. So in evaporation, heat is taken up for a phase change. What that means is when a liquid, in this case let's say water, turns into gaseous state, let's say water vapors, it takes away heat with it. Traditional water coolers are a perfect example for this. On the other hand, in condensation, heat is given out for a phase change. So a gas will give out heat to become liquid. In short, evaporation takes away heat and condensation gives out heat. Now all we have to do is combine them in such a way that heat is taken out from one region that can be inside of a refrigerator or, or some cold storage unit. And this heat is given out to another region. In our case, it's the surroundings. Let's say we want to cool this box. We would want evaporation to take place inside this box so that it takes away its heat and the box cools down. But then we would want to release this heat somewhere. That's where the condensation comes in. We can do the condensation thingy outside this box, which would release all the heat in the surroundings. And voila, we have our refrigeration system. Um, not quite yet. We need a cycle that repeats itself. The most obvious one will be to connect them in such a way that stuff gets evaporated from the box, taking away heat, undergoes condensation outside to lose heat, and then funnels down again for evaporation and then comes back up to absorb heat and the cycle repeats. The fancy name for this stuff is the refrigerant or the coolant. Cause it's cool. Get it? This part which condenses stuff is called a condenser. What a surprise, right? And this is obviously called an evaporator. But it's not over yet. The temperature wouldn't be lower enough to cool and there's no way to drive this cycle. We want as much heat as possible to be taken out of this box. Let's consider a completely different scenario. If you are fishing in a large pond with an exact number of fish, let's say 5, there is a small chance you're gonna catch one. But if you make this pond smaller with same number of fishes, chances are you'll end up catching a heck lot of them because you decrease the space where they can run to. Same thing happens with our coolant here. It's a gas at this point. You'll want to compress it to scoop out as much heat as possible in one go. Of course this analogy is wrong on many different levels but you get the idea. So in between this evaporator and condenser we place a compressor. Not only does it compresses the coolant, it also circulates the coolant in the system under pressure. We can do better. We know that expansion causes cooling right? Think of it this way. The thermal properties of a substance largely comes from random motions of particles in it. So if you increase the volume, these particles have to travel a longer distance before bouncing back. So overall temperature decreases because the agitation of these molecules decreases and they have more space to run to. Anyway, so how can we use this process to cool stuff? We can place an expansion valve in between the condenser and evaporator. Now our coolant is really spread and cooled out when it reaches the evaporator. It absorbs heat there, then it goes to the compressor, then the condenser where it loses heat and the cycle repeats. And this is what a refrigeration cycle is. This is known as a simple refrigeration cycle. Most of the stuff, your fridge, air conditioners work on this basic cycle. Go check out the community tab on my channel and vote for the next video.